on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, December 9th. That's right. Getting closer to Christmas. All the holiday season is a glow, is a buzz. I got wintry mix on here in the background. And we got a ton of breaking news slash rumors for you. And as I teased on Twitter, yes, I have been holding out on you for most of this day. I do have some updates. I do have some stuff. We're going to cover a whole bunch of things that maybe we didn't get to in the last show. Uh, Sebastian Lejet, Christian Pavone, some others in there as well. We got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. A lot of transfer alerts, rumor alerts, all that fun stuff to talk about. Let's break right into it. Let's not waste a single moment. Let's announce the man who's back in one of the ugliest, but also one of the prettiest Christmas sweaters I've ever seen. It's Eric, the Portuguese hammer, Vier. Eric, how's it going, buddy? Speaking of wintry mix, I'm back. You got the LA Galaxy holiday sweater, feeling all the festive cheer, ready to break out into song at a moment's notice. So let me know when you're ready. I got the Mariah Carey octave. You know, I'll practice the vocal warm-ups on mute, but I'm ready. I'm ready to hit that high note. Whenever, whenever you need. I know I'm a little early for the Christmas show, but uh, but yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm committed. I'm ready that's, to roll. That, that's good. I'm I'm glad that you're here. I would like to um I, I would like to tell you, but two things, two two observations. One a story. One observation to sort of start things out. Uh, I am uh, I always am convinced that I know the words to every Christmas song. Until until I have to start like singing them to somebody without the music playing, right? Like, oh, I don't, I don't. So I would just like to say, there's only like five good Christmas songs. Like 700 people sing those five Christmas songs, okay, right? Okay. Right. You know that type of thing. It's like there's 700 different versions of the five good Christmas songs, but they're all there. I am convinced I know all the words to, to them, and uh, I just tried to sing them to my son uh, while he was getting ready for bed, and I remembered uh, almost none of the words. So I was really, I was like, Jing- Jingle Bells. There's, yeah, there's. There's a horse. Jingle bells. And it's, you know, yeah, jingle bells. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I see. When you go to the the extended cut, that's yeah, the I mean, where it so, starts so to you, go. Yeah. So you know the Ziggy first pudding and yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it gets. It get, yeah. go, then we get, got it, upsought. There, you know, then the lyrics don't even rhyme. They're just making words up. I I hear what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Yes. It, it get, there's deep cuts. There's just, it's like every, everybody knows the first verse of every like Christmas song. And then you get into the second verse and it's like the B side of an album that you've yeah. never listened to. <laughs> B sides albums. That's fun too. Yeah. Um, so like yeah. Coast, yeah. Coast doesn't play this version. So yeah, they, they, they go just straight and they transition right into the, the next Michael Buble song. I, I would also like to tell you, just to tell you sort of how my day has gone, uh, besides arguing with people in the Discord for most of the day, had my blood pressure through. Yeah. I spent, I, I was supposed to go to lunch at 12. Uh, I started arguing and it was then 1.30 and I was what? like, I, I'm so angry, I'm going to go to lunch, right? Yes, and you, so, well, you, you, put in a, you put in a hard day's shift. That was, yeah. you know, go, going into the Discord, that's going to battle. That's, that's putting in your hours. So yeah, but, you, you earned your lunch. By the way, Patrick says about Christmas songs, there's always a horse. You have to remember that. There's always, yeah. a, there always is, there's a thing. Uh, I, you know, and, and before I get to the rest of my lunch story, uh, there was, they were talking about uh, Santa Baby, that song, and we'll just sort of excuse the fact that it's weird whenever you really start figuring out exactly what's going on. But they were talking about, I want to put a sable under the tree. Um, and one of the hosts goes, goes, oh, well, she wants a car. That's a pretty big ask. And I was like, yeah, man, who's going to get a car? And a sable is not a car. No, I it was going to say, well, what is it? Even if I don't know what it is, but I can tell you, I don't think Mercury 
one of all doesn't make cars anymore. And then right. the Sable, they definitely, you know, discontinued the, you know, more than 15 the... years ago. So, so you're, you're already dating yourself. Yeah. So, so but I so, have no idea. So a yeah. Sable <laughs> is, is like a fur coat. Is a fur coat, okay. so you put a fur coat under the tree, which is a little See, better of an ask, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like she's reaching and, a lot in that song. That's and, all I'm saying. And here I am thinking of you know 19, late 1990s uh, WWE you know manager to to Mark Merrill. Yeah, that's the sable I'm thinking of, and that's no. that that's taking my brain to a whole different okay. place. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so, since it's it's off season, we're off the rails. We're yes. already there. I yes. will say, if you have if you haven't watched Love Hard on Netflix, that's a new movie, holiday movie. Holiday movies are your thing. It's very good. It's predictable. Lifetime movie style movie, but you know mm. what you're getting, but it's still worth the watch. But they do a, a riff on Baby It's Cold Outside, and obviously okay. that song has been Wait. canceled as of recently. But he does his own twist on it, and, is, you know, and kind of makes it all about consent. I think it's, it's pretty, it's really, really funny. So I think I watched If you haven't checked that out, go for it. I think I watched that. I think I watched that already. I don't know. I watched it a bunch, right. but I think I watched it. To that the already. Galaxy News. No, hold on. I still got to tell my story oh, about okay, this. Never mind. Good. So I went to lunch all angry, and I'm like, I'm just going to go to lunch, get something to eat, and I'm going to blow off some steam. And so I'm in the drive through at a particular fast food joint I won't mention because I'll get yelled at regardless of where it is. It doesn't matter if it's well, McDonald's or In N Out or anything. Yes, irregardless of where I go. Of course, that should get Aaron all fired up if he's there in there. He let's, let's find him. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, so I was sitting there, so I'm going and I'm inching forward like you do. And all of a sudden, wham, right from behind. Somebody hit me from behind oh. in the drive through And I was so angry. I was so upset. And I was like, this, <laughs> this, is, this is not okay. This is not okay. I don't need this right now. I'm already angry about everybody calling every Galaxy player soft without a clue of what that means. I was so angry. I got out of the car ready to yell at somebody. And the guy was like, I am so sorry, dude. I did not mean to hit you. That was totally my fault. I, I am. So are you okay? Is everything? I'm like, I'm like, <sighs> Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, I'm just, he came in with the right, right, the right, the right amount of pressure. So I'm, I'm also going to ask: in the drive-through, it couldn't have been that fast. He wasn't flying in at 30 you, miles per hour. No, so was there even a mark or hardly no, anything? No, there wasn't. Okay, but, yeah. but it always hits harder than you think. Right. Yeah. It always hits harder Feels than harder, you think. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. geez, that, that didn't feel so anyway. Everybody's fine. Nobody's fine. We, 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 we didn't, every, nothing's hurt. Everybody's fine. We didn't exchange info. He was like, have a good day. I'm sorry. And I was already like, dude, just, just let it go. We're good. You should have, good. should have We're at least good. offered to pay for your meal. Yeah, yeah he should have. <laughs> oh, well, didn't happen. All right. Uh, good times. But by the way, everybody says Canes, by the way, is where I should have gone. If there was one close to work, I would. And I've had this discussion with my wife that there isn't one close to work. And I'm upset about that. <sighs> ready? Are you ready, Eric? Ready. You want to take a deep breath? I will take a deep breath. Okay. I have, a, I, I have a Canes tangent if we want to have a Canes tangent. I mean, how many? We're seven minutes. I really like upsetting people like eight minutes on right. our show who are like, so, you haven't talked about the galaxy yet? Go ahead, please. I'm traveling for work. Raising Canes is not a new phenomenon. There's Raising Canes where I live in California, Raising Canes around where I live now in Texas. But where I'm traveling for work, they just dropped a new Raising Canes. So I've yeah. thought to myself, hey, going to go there for lunch. Line <laughs> literally wraps around this entire shopping center. I, I'm guessing at minimum, 45 to an hour wait. And it's like, I like, I like canes, not worth an hour wait. And no. especially, so it's still new, still novelty in the city that I'm in. So I'm like, I'm going to let the the locals enjoy that one. Ah, uh, first time I ever went to in and out, they had opened one in Arizona. This is whenever I was going to school at Arizona state, they had opened one in Scottsdale. And I was like, I'm going because it was the first one. Like I had been to not out, not in California. I'm, I'm going Waited for an hour and a half. Totally worth it. Went back the next night. All right. Uh, let's get to uh, a little LA Galaxy. Eric and I don't talk enough to each other, so this no. is our, our catch-up time, too. So just FYI. Uh, deep breath, everybody. And here we go. That's right. Uh, we have a bunch of rumor alerts. You're going to hear this noise. You're going to see this uh, this alert sign many times today. We have, I don't know, three or four of them. So let's start with the first one. Uh, one of the ones that we have been telling you about, and if you've been following on our Twitter feed, that's where you're going to get most of our information. And then I go and discuss that with the people on Discord. And so if you want more information, Discord is where you can do it. Joining, we click links. There's all sorts of stuff there. Um, the first one we had talked about, I think, on Monday, but I didn't have confirmation as to exactly what was happening and whether or not it was going to happen and whether or not it was going to be confirmed. Uh, I was uh, able to confirm this, and we know that the LA Galaxy asked for permission from Toronto to talk to Mike Munoz. Mike Munoz, former LA Galaxy 2 head coach, uh, was let go whenever Dennis DeClosa came in and wanted to put his own guys in, in place. Uh, Mike went to, uh, to Toronto, and I think TFC 2 uh, their lower division and was was uh, working over there 
there and, and coaching over there for them. Uh, the Galaxy asked for permission for Toronto. They got that permission. Uh, and Mike Munoz will be joining the LA Galaxy. Director of Development and Method- Methodology will be his title. Uh, not coming back as G2 head coach. Uh, Junior Gonzalez currently is LA Galaxy 2 head coach. A little more information on that coming up. Um, the the Director of, Meth- of Development and Method- Methodology is uh, in at least practice from what I can tell, Eric. It looks like the Academy Director, but mm-hmm. it, but he also is going to fold Galaxy 2 into that as well, right? So, yeah. Uh, Greg Vanny is in charge of technical decisions on pl- player personnel, those types of things for the senior team all the way through the organization. So he needs somebody who's going to help him make those decisions at G2 and in the academy. And Mike Munoz seems to be that guy for this. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I hear development, basically G2 is the last step in development because, you know, G2 that you are still that is still a, a, a ground where you're training those players and developing them, giving them game minutes, playing in USL and getting game ready. So that's kind of the last stage of the development. So I'm like, I'm imagining like you're imagining Greg Vanny first team and above, and then Munoz G2 and down. So right. almost working backwards. And then the methodology piece, you know, <laughs> who knows with all the fancy titles, if that's just, you know, kind of general tactics. But even when Dennis Tacosa was in charge, he talked about the structure and the kind of the, you know, the theme and the, 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 the why behind they went, you know, they were doing certain things. So to me, it's just kind of, it's just giving a title to everything that, you know, he was doing previously with the, with the Academy. Yeah. So, uh, so Mike Munoz will be coming back for that. Uh, really uh, again, to allow Greg Vanny to focus on the first team and, and be kept up abroad for everything else that was happening out. Now I talked about junior Gonzalez as G2 head coach. Whenever I had originally talked, I had heard nothing about what his future held. And so I assumed that for, he was going to stay around. Um, that seems to not be the case. Junior Gonzalez will depart. It seems as galaxy Two head coach. Um, and so it will be one of Mike's things uh, to find a new galaxy Two mm-hmm. head coach. But if we go through, and one of the major things that Dennis Tocosa did was the academy and fi- fix the academy and fix that pipeline going to the senior team, right? Spent a lot of time with those relationships, Eric. Uh, he is now gone. Dennis Tocosa is gone. The director of academy, Juan Carlos Ortega, is now gone. Junior Gonzalez, the Galaxy 2 head coach, will be leaving as well. So you have three guys there who were there when Galaxy Academy and G2 were having success, and now they're gone. Now, it's not unusual for a new guy to come in and want to have his own guys, Right. And being he's now in charge of all these decisions, he gets to pick those guys. So Vanny gets to pick who he wants in those positions. But having seen something that has taken a, taken some good momentum now go in a different direction is a scary proposition because you don't know if they're going to be able to continue that momentum and continue those relationships that G2 and the Academy have created while Dennis was here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to zag a little bit in the other direction. But before I do that, this just kind of the coincidences of the timing of this. So when DTK comes in, that's when Munoz departs. So now the DTK is gone. Munoz is now back in. So if you kind of read the tea leaves there, it kind of lets you know, well, who was in charge when Munoz, Munoz was here. And so it's, all those signs are kind of pointing to Chris Klein, Jovan Karofsky, uh, you know, Pete Vianas, I know he's, he's got a spectrum deal. I don't know if he's, he's back in the fold, but it kind of seems like that old guard that was in charge, they seem to be the ones who are in charge now. And so they're kind of bringing back their guys that they had in place. So that is the part that's a little bit scary to me because obviously when they were at the helm, the Galaxy didn't have success. So for some reason, they're being rewarded with, you know, getting another a, a third, fourth, fifth chance at life, whatever you want to call this. Right. So the, the next kind of the, the zag where I'll say I'll go, the devil's advocate piece is that DTK and developing the academy pipeline, kind of fixing some of those structures that having in place, developing a true pathway where now uh, academy players were going to G2 and then signing first team contracts. The Galaxy had several players from the academy and then G2 signed first team contracts in the last year. So now you had, I, I want to say, five, six guys that you signed as academy players you know, eventually to first team contracts. So you can't sign five guys every season right. from the academy to the first team. So now they've kind of stocked your, your Saldanas, your, your Neils, your Arajos, if you want to want to count that, you know, uh, the, you, the Procranuses, if you want to count him in there as well. So you have uh, a chunk of those academy players now, and now you want to give them two, three years on the first team to kind of you know, maybe get a crack at some minutes and then get that first team spot. If that's something that they're going to do, they're going to, you know, kind of follow in the footsteps of Julian Araujo and get that first team spot in the next two or three years. So right. you don't need to backfill with your academy probably for the next at least one to two seasons. So if you're going to make this change, 
it's kind of okay to make that change now because you've already filled with your academy. And so now you're, you're developing the next, over the next two to three years, that's when you're now kind of building up in two to three years, who's going to be that next batch of academy signings? Because you just, it's not feasible for every year to sign five academy guys. You're just going to, there's not enough roster spots and they're not going to get those first team minutes. It's not practical. No, but you're going to rotate through, you know, obviously some of the, the academy guys that make it to the senior team aren't going to progress, yeah. right? They're, they're going True. to stumble. I mean, when we see this, it's not everybody who can make it. And, uh, you know, this has been one of my arguments as well is that most of the guys who are in major league soccer don't play very many minutes. That's most of the guys who are in Major League Soccer. There's a 30-man roster. You have probably 18 to 20 guys who really play, and then there's 10 guys who are outside of that who probably never play, right? And then you have 11 yeah. starters who start most of the games, and then you have, you know, six guys who get to fill in sometimes, but they don't, you know, they average maybe 45 minutes, a, you know, a game or even less than that, 20 minutes a game, you know, 15 minutes a game. Those of, so when you think about it, people in MLS, the majority of players don't play. Right. And so that's something to think about. Also, the majority of people who get developed in the academy don't make it to Galaxy 2. And the majority of the Galaxy 2 players don't make it to the senior team. Right. Yeah. And so it's this attrition that percent, keeps happening yeah, over, percent over, over, percent over a percent. Yeah. Right. And so you keep wiping people through. You're going to lose somebody. Right. Somebody's going to get hurt, unfortunately, and they're not going to be able to continue. Right. That type of thing. Somebody's just not going to be able to handle the pro game in Major League Soccer. Right. Um, I think everybody sees uh, sees that, you know, Julian Araujo is so successful and comes up through the academy and does the things that he's supposed to do. And now you look at him and you're like, oh, man, you, everybody's like that. Not everybody is like that. That's well, think, that's one. Think, think back to the last seven years. You know, your uh, McBeans, your you know Ari Lassiter's, your uh, you know uh, you you can keep going through this list. Uh, who are your favorite brothers? The Villarreal's. You know, all these guys who have gone through, and none of them pan. So to say, oh, well, look at Julian Araujo. Well, that's one out of you know you know four, 30, 40 players who they've tried right. to cycle through and then again excellent product placement with the yeah. dr pepper there yeah. to yeah. give the people, chat what they want people on the podcast will never see that that's that's the sad part they're missing they're missing the, all the chat was going wild it was incredible uh, yeah uh, yeah so so i so that's the that you're right that is the part of it it's not all of these players are going to pan out it's going to be the one in 30 or the one in 50 that actually squeaks through it's 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 not the it's not the rule it's the exception it is. So anyway, this is something to watch. Again, I think you're right, Eric. It won't be, you know, this this high speed crash on the freeway. Uh, it's more likely uh, going to be, you know, a fender bender and a drive through that sort of starts this whole chain reaction. <laughs> setting uh, it up for that whole. Uh, that was, what, uh, uh, what was it? Eight, 18 minutes of setup just to land there. What a you callback. Stuck it perfectly. What Credits a callback. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, that's sort of the, the stuff that's going on with um, with Mike Munoz. Expect that to be announced sometime. You know, MLS Cup happens on Saturday. Once that, then it's sort of free for all. There's a whole bunch of list of things. There's a half day trade window that's coming up, which is one of the reasons why we're paying so much attention to all the rumors right now, because we do expect that one of the things that is going to happen, um, you know, here uh, in this this half day trade window could be a movement or two from the LA Galaxy um, outward, probably not inward um, as we're looking at this thing. So half day trade window opens up on Sunday, only a half day, basically just like six <laughs> hours or something like that. I it's if, if you don't love MLS, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, what's wrong with you? You know, your MLS cup and then half a day of trade window. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's MLS. work up to a fervor and then just like a, a, a very big letdown after that. So 9, 9 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern is that trade window. All right. So just oh, quick strap quick. in, strap in so fast, so fast. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things. Okay. So that's, that's sort of where we're sitting with Mike Munoz that we're expecting to get an announcement sometime whenever that's not a super high priority announcement that they're definitely going to do. Let's get to Sebastian Legette. Oh, of course I, I got it right as, right as it was looping. Was, that was my moment. It's Mariah Carey. <laughs> oh, I don't want to lie. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll that stop. was good. Uh, we're going to talk about Sebastian Legette. Obviously, uh, Stephen Goff dropped a, a little bit, not a bomb, by the way. This is so expected. And I saw I was giving people uh, some stick on Twitter. They're like, man, I predicted this. I'm like, you didn't have to have inside information to predict that Sebastian Legette, one, was on the trading block and two, might end up in New England. All right. Now. Oh, yeah. You, you know what was the tell? What? And you, and you know, I'm a keen eye for this. I, yep. I know yeah, what you're talking about. LA Galaxy was no longer on his Instagram profile, had the U.S. Men's National Team crest. So that's when he knew. It, time, time, the time in L.A. was done. Once the L.A. Galaxy left the Instagram profile and uh, the picture in the Galaxy jersey was gone. So that's when we knew. 
I, I think he's cruising in Hawaii right now. Um, I think that he's there with Becky G. I watched a whole Instagram live with Becky G this morning. It was a replay just to uh -huh. see if Sebastian was there, and he was. That's, so yeah, it was. Uh, that's why me. you needed to go to lunch. You needed to you know, quench your thirst there. That's young right. Buck. <laughs> oh, Seba. Um, so anyway, so the 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 rumor is, and per Stephen Goff, and let's just go ahead and get the tweet up here. MLS trade in the works, according to two sources, Special and Jet from LA Galaxy, New England Revolution, which won't relinquish a player in the deal. So just they're talking about money. Uh, trade window opens on Sunday for that very short period of time. Uh, Goff goes on to say, Legit played for Bruce Arena at Galaxy 2015-2016 and U.S. Men's National Team. Trade hasn't been finalized, but talks are very serious. Expansion, Charlotte F C had also taken strong interest in the 29 year old midfielder. I can add to that Dallas, Austin and Colorado all interested in Sebastian Legette as well. What did we tell you on this show? We said that if they were going to move Sebastian Legette, it probably wouldn't be in conference that Charlotte or New England under Bruce arena would be a good landing spot for them. Yeah. Uh, it's no, it's no, no, no secret that Bruce Arena likes to go and get players that he's worked with before. Um, he likes players in this age range at 29 as well, just sort of right on the end of that peak and thinks that he can do something. And Bruce has, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you that uh, certainly talking to some people that it seems Vanny was unsure of Sebastian Legette, right? And it was sort of like, I don't know whether or not he can mix this uh, or mix into this system that I have, and I'm not sure he's a good fit for it. And if he's not a good fit and I'm unsure, then I can't keep him because he costs a lot of money and he's going to cost, uh, you know, almost a million dollars in, in roster spot with uh, general yeah. allocation money, t targeted allocation money, however you want to um, sort of say that. So I can't keep him. He, he costs too much and he takes up too much if I'm not 100% sure he can do what I need him to do. And we saw during the season that Vanny kept trying to, get him in a position to be successful. And Sebastian Legette didn't have a good year. Uh, he had a he had a better year for the U.S. men's national team. And if you look at the beginning of the year, he was very good for them, right? And then he there, faded into this. That, uh, that was the parallel that he had. It was, you know, did we get USM, USMNT, Sebastian Legette, or Galaxy Legette? And eventually, towards the end, it all kind of... They were the same. <laughs> it all melded into the same thing. So you're right. I, I think Vanny, you know, furthermore, not only is he taking up a, a, a large chunky your roster spot and you don't have a spot for him i think he eventually just became a sub at the end for benny and so again when you think u.s national team player someone of his you know stature you know just being a sub that's a waste of a sub so then you think okay well if i unload the near million dollars in salary and then he's going to be a valuable asset so you're going to maybe I, I would imagine to get somewhere close in that million range or you know in gam tam or whatever it is and so now you're getting two million dollars so you're kind of doubling your investment doubling your return yeah, that's that's where you want to get rid of them. So depending on what they're able to get for them, that's going to be you know the key. But I think you're right. If it, it wasn't working out, so again, that's the time to move it. To me, I thought Charlotte was going to be the place just right. because they're an expansion team. You can have a face of the franchise and you know really move forward. They're going to have tons of you know Tam Gam to spend. So I thought that was a, a landing point that made sense. But you know Bruce. Bruce is the guy who brought him into the league, so it makes sense that Bruce is a guy who wants him, uh, and that's he, he. He seems like a Bruce guy, and he'd actually be a good fit, uh, you know, for the Revs for what they have. What I would wish, I wish there was a trade because the Revs had, you know, some guys that I think the Galaxy would definitely, you know, benefit from having like a Carlson heel. Uh, you know, that's that's exactly the type of player the Galaxy need. But you're not going to give up the league MVP <laughs> no, for no. Sebastian Legit. So as no. much as we we love the boy, you're not you're he's not MVP uh, worthy for a trade. By the way, uh, Vera in the chat room says, you know, he did lose his sister this year as well. I mean, it's certainly part of yeah. the conversation and, and the whole deal. Eric, if I had to ask you what Sebastian Legette's best season for the LA Galaxy was, what would you say is the answer to that? I've thought about this uh -huh. long and hard. And yes. it's his, his first year he came to the Galaxy. 2015, he was scoring goals. He was going at defenders. And that, that's the Sebastian Legette that I always longed for. He never, he never seemed to match that intensity that he had when he was, uh, when he first arrived in 2015. So where uh, do I win? Uh, nothing. Cause you were wrong. Uh, his best <laughs> year, uh, at least by goals and assists. And, and I think okay. that that's a, a relatively good argument for him. Although I would still say that his possession based game is still one of the better things that sort of works for him. And so that's more of an asset. That's what Bruce Arena is getting. One of the top possession based passers in major league soccer. 
Um, but it was 2020 goals and assists. He had 10 total, six goals, four assists, uh, 2015 and 20 games played. Cause he came in uh, a little after the, the season had started. Um, actually more than a little bit, but he was eventually he got there. So 20 games played, uh, seven goals, two assists. So nine technically. Okay. Um, I'm not totally, I'm not no, far off no. with my assessment. Yeah. If, if we're going on goals, but you're right. And that is something, uh, not everyone loved that he turned into this, but he did go from more of an, attacking player into a possession based player so you're right depending on what which version you like you know he turned into a different player than he was so if you wanted 2015 legit you're upset with what's turned out but if you like the possession guy then you're you're going to go after a player like that so it all depends on uh, and i think that's probably why the relationship uh, and again twitter's not real life but why there's kind of a sebastian legit hater club out there is because we saw so much of that promise in that attack and it just was never able uh, to return to that type of uh, that type of play. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I got to stop and acknowledge uh, Herb and the Herb, and the Herb Memorial chat room. Um, that's what we're calling chat rooms now. The Herb Memorial chat room, even though Herb is perfectly fine. Uh, Fifty dollar <laughs> uh, super chat, Herb. Thank yes. you. Uh, happy holidays to you. A shout out to the hammer with that awesome sweater. I might actually have to give you some of that money for the sweater. I was going to say, I'm, I'm not even on camera right now. I need to, I need, we need to, for her paid the $50. I feel like I need to dance or do, or do something. I, you know, I feel like I need to earn those $50. <laughs> Please don't. Shut, this, shut. Is, this, this is a children's show. All right. This is all, all really, ages. De- demonetize the video. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> thank you, Herb. Appreciate it. The sweater wanted to spice things up here today. So appreciate Appreciate the super chat. And as always, Herb, you're, you're the man. We, we appreciate the chats as always. We will always respect you in, in memory, respectfully. Yeah, in memoriam, um, <laughs> even though you're perfectly fine, I would imagine. Uh, here's the thing with Sebastian Legette is that whenever he first came in, too, he played the winger role. He was more of a bomb at forward guy. He was also a kid who had not played very much with West Ham. Remember, he had mono and that sort mm-hmm. of stalled everything. And like he didn't really get much playing time, finally made a debut, but still wasn't a wasn't a big sort of hit. Um, with West Ham, came over to the Galaxy and just came out of the, the gates, just as yeah. you have seen sometimes young players do. Now, I don't know if people remember this, he faded in that year as well. As he got towards the end of the season, he ran out of gas That's because fair. he was not used to playing that many minutes, right? And so I think he matured as a player and sort of figured out how to provide that consistent sort of um, effort that is needed in Major League Soccer day over day uh, and game over game. And for me, uh, I, I understand why Greg Vandy is doing it. I, I think it's probably a smart move. I think it's a smart move for Sebastian Legette, fully expecting that Sebastian Legette is going to have a very good season for New England uh, whenever this all happens. I've heard, um, outside of some of the other things that I, I've been talking about, I've heard that the the paperwork and everything is still ongoing, so nothing's done done. Um, but barring any of that, uh, it may not get announced on Sunday. I will I will tell everybody. It, don't expect it on Sunday. It may happen on Sunday, but I don't think it's going to be ready for that <laughs> half day trade window. Okay. But th- here's my concern. He was on the trading block and it seems like the galaxy may not have the leverage here because you know, he, they wanted to get rid of him. So I was putting a price tag on him. And now that I'm thinking about that, I, I'm, I'm worried that we may not get a lot for him. So I, I'm curious to see what it's going to be. Cause it seems like the leverage is not in the galaxy's hands because the, he was on the block. They were looking to get rid of him. where it might change is, other teams that were willing to give money and maybe that's where it's going to drive up the price. But that's my only bit of concern is, are we going to get, you know, a, a good value for offloading a player like that? I will say this as well. If Greg Vanny is the coach that I expect him to, and is it the GM and the player manager that I expect him to be? I imagine he asked Sebastian Lejet where he wanted to go as well. And I would imagine that the galaxy would be willing to take less money to get him to a place where he wants to go. Now, having said that, I think, It could be a lot of money, but if you're looking for the place where you probably could have got the most general allocation money, the most time, it probably would have been Charlotte, right? And, and you don't want, and, and again, I, to me, I throw out Colorado and I throw out Dallas and I throw out Austin because I'm like, I do not want to face him twice in the Western conference. Enough Mm -hmm. things are hard enough. You don't want to face him twice. At most you want to face him twice. One time in the, uh, whenever you play whatever the new England (laughs) and then an MLS cup, MLS cup, right? (laughs) Those are the only two times that you want to play him. Um, and so he's, go- I think he's going to play better. Here's the thing that also could be in this, you know, Goff said it was a money deal. Um, perhaps that's the case. Perhaps it's all money. Also, could an international slot be thrown in there as well? Maybe the Galaxy want an extra international slot to, to free up some room to do some things. So maybe Bruce Arena's like, that's fine because all my guys get green cards because I know how to manipulate yeah, the system. Because I'm Bruce, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, New England needs to be the place where you'd go for to an international, international slot. slot. But I also know that, you know, that they have done a better job of bringing in uh, international guys. But, but again, to your point, 
Bruce also knows how to, to work, uh, you know, the immigration system over there on both on both coasts. Yeah, I, I would. To me, I am I'm going to put a wide range on it because I think it's really hard to figure out value for players in Major League Soccer in, in inner team trades, because sometimes you're just like, I had no idea he was worth one point two million dollars in general allocation money. Mm -hmm. um, I would put it anywhere between, let's say, six hundred and a million dollars in general allocation money. And if it's and even around 500, I wouldn't be surprised and people would like fall over and hold their chest. Here's the thing that you have to remember is that you're getting his exchange rate. <laughs> yeah, his well, his salary also, right? The yeah. salary is 950, almost it's 923,750, but to say $950,000, yeah. you get that back. So already the Galaxy can go out and spend almost a million dollars on another player to replace Sebastian Legit. Just if they got absolutely nothing with him and they just got him off the roster. And remember, his contract runs through 2023. Right. He just signed a newish contract. So 2023 is the last year of that contract. He would not have been out of contract this year. It would have been another year as well. Yeah. And so and Enrique actually mentioned in the chat. So I promise Enrique, I'm not stealing this. I was actually going to say this, but uh, 500,000 in GAM might not seem like or, or TAM, excuse me, might not Either. seem like it a doesn't lot, matter. But, but but the exchange rate. So maybe you can bring someone in for like close to a million dollars or even close to, you know, uh, uh, more than that. But then you use that money to buy them down. And so now you're getting essentially a fourth DP because you're able to pay someone that that level of a salary, but you're able to buy it down. So while that might not seem like a lot, if it's enough to make up the difference so you can get a DP level player and just buy them down with that extra money, then that that's 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 good enough. And so Enrique, shout out to you for calling it. But I promise I was going to make that point before he put it in the chat. <laughs> he, here's the thing as well. Um, and by the way, I had a scheduled tweet that went out at 830. So the chat room already is going to know about one of the things that I'm talking about. And so if you're paying attention to Twitter, then you will see that. And I will talk about that here as well. So everybody chill out and we'll get to it. Um, the other thing is that if you're going to do that and buy down a fourth DP and do all of those things that you're going to do, um, you have to look at the galaxy and and what happens the next year. Right. You could bring in a DP, Eric, right? First of all, you're going to get a new DP, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, that's happening regardless. That's happening regardless. So you don't have to worry about or that. Irregardless. Either of those. Um, and <laughs> so uh, that's one thing. Then we know that Chicharito's contract is up at the end of this year, right? So he's gone at the end of this year. Um, and and yes. so could you bring in somebody who, for short term, for a lower amount of money, who would still be a DP, but you're able to pay them down underneath that DP and then make them a DP next year? And so you can flip flop and get four DPs, yeah. you know, for that little bit of time. It, there's some there's some planning that yeah. needs to happen here. Yeah. In, in the circles that I run, we call that a Zlatan. So we call that the Zlatan deal, the sweetheart. Yeah. You know, we could bring you in on time and then next year we pay you the big bucks. That's when when Jaimes Rodriguez shows up and you're paying him one point one point three million dollars or something like that. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a, it'll it'll be a, an interesting one. So um, that's the deal with Sebastian Legette. I imagine we're going to hear more about that, but wanted to fill you in on some of the other teams that we're looking at. Wanted to give you an idea on sort of the the um, the timeline of all this happening again. I don't know that it happens Sunday. I think something's happening on Sunday and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But um, that's that's one of the things. Now we're going to go on to another one. Let's see if I can do this better this time. Oh, OK, there we go. All right. A little alert here. We now have the uh, Christian Pavone alert, the Christian Pavone alert. Uh, and this was one that I didn't get to talk about on Monday. I think it broke on Tuesday. Uh, where Boca, some Boca accounts started tweeting that the LA Galaxy were once again interested in Christian Pavone. And Eric, I was like, this is Groundhog's Day. This cannot be, uh, we're not, we're not doing this again. <laughs> I was so upset when I heard this. I was like, I have to talk about this again. Ah, uh, good times. Don't, Let's hear it. What's, don't, what's the latest? Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. If you've watched Groundhog's Day, that's my favorite part. Just wanted to let you know. Don't drive angry. Uh, that's, of course, when the Groundhog is driving on the railroad tracks, obviously. Um, Christian Pavone to LA. Uh, I, I was able to confirm this and I tweeted this out. So this is not news to you, but I do have some additional information that I can add to this. Uh, I can confirm that the LA galaxy are trying to reacquire Christian Pavone. Uh, there is, a, so I have to put this in three different tenses because I don't know if it's happened or if it, or if it's happening right now, or if it is going to happen. But Chris Kine and Jovan Karofsky are supposedly going to either have already been to Argentina are in Argentina right now or will be going to Argentina in order to try to get this done. I know, I know that's like, well, Josh, that's you, like three different things, right? Yeah. Don't give us a Schrodinger's Klein. I don't like that. I, I don't like the way that sounds very well. But, but again, Klein and Karofsky, 
why are they the ones, why are they doing all the business right now? It really makes me nervous. So some, we're not, we're not going to announce a new GM, are we? I think, I think no, no, those, the, those are the, our guys. It's, oh, they are going to announce that Vanny has the technical decisions in terms of player personnel and who he wants to get and that Jovan Karofsky and Chris Klein will pick up the slack on everything else that inquires that negotiating paperwork, those types of things in order to get him the player that he is, which by the way, we have done before. If everybody remembers, this is not new. The LA galaxy have pulled this before. So this is where, <laughs> this is where we are at again. Now, uh, I have more faith that Greg Vanny is there. Um, I, I don't want to say this to be rude, but I, I, you know, with Dennis, I always felt like there was an adult in the room. And again, the super, the, like the <laughs> supervision is like, I just, I don't know. And it, it should be worrying. And it's certainly a question mark and everybody should be paying attention to it. I think that's the only way I can say it. So Chris Klein, Jovan Karofsky have already gone, are there now, or will be going to Argentina. They are going after Christian Pavon. They are being serious. There's a couple things you have to know about Christian Pavon. Uh, his contract expires in June of 2022. So that's six months away, basically in soccer terms, right? Um, that expiration uh, means that one, he can sign it under FIFA rules. He can sign a pre-contract in order to go somewhere in June, right? Once it's within six months, you can sign a pre-contract and you can move. But really what's happening is that Boca is trying to move him now because they realize if they don't move him now, yeah. they get $0 for him and so he can move for free. Now, I've seen Eric, and I'm sure you've seen it on Twitter, everybody's saying, we should just wait. The Galaxy should just wait. Wait and get him in the summertime and then you don't have to pay a transfer fee. And his $1.4 or $1.5 million salary, whatever he was making, sort of could possibly fit under the TAM level and you could TAM him instead of making him a designated player. Wonderful. I think everybody is on top of that except for one very important thing. Um... Well, actually, multiple very important things, but <laughs> but but still, um, the 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 important thing that I was told is that this will not be cheap. It will not be easy. Uh, the LA Galaxy will be bidding against multiple teams in order to get Christian Pavon. This is not as simple as well. He can only go to the Galaxy. He can go a lot of places. Now, I think he wants to come to LA, and he holds a lot of power because his contract expires in six months, and he yeah. can sort of be like, "I'm not going there." But this will not be cheap. It will not be easy. It will require a transfer fee. And that transfer fee, Eric, whenever we were talking last year, was like 15 million, 12 was, to 15. I, I think they were willing to pay, I think, somewhere between 10 to 12. But I think we said that ceiling could be 15, and we, we would be okay with that for a player of his caliber. So what it reminds me of is the, actually that waiting for, you know, when he becomes a free agent and becomes available, you're right. If we did wait for that, you know, next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire, that'd be great. But you're right. Boca, if that happened, would get zero dollars. So even if they sell him for, you know, a sack of potatoes and, and you know, and, and gam, which they can't even use. They the have Argentine, potatoes. They have that's, potatoes. It's better than nothing. So, <laughs> right. so they're going to, they're going to offload them for something. But what it reminds me of is back when another Boca player, when the Galaxy were in talks and Dario Benedetto was that name that was getting thrown around. It's like, well, we don't need him right now. This can be a summer move. And then by the time summer came around, he was already sold to Marseille. So you can't wait around for players like that. They're going to get scooped up. So even if it's not going it's, it, to, it's a shorter contract. So you're right. It's not going to be the 10, 15 million. So you are looking at that, you know, five, six, seven million if you want to guarantee it. But if you know you want to play hardball, maybe you can get him for a little bit less. You'll get something because uh, he does have the leverage. But uh, it just reminds me of we've been in this situation before where, OK, we'll wait till the summer. Well, that that works for some leagues, but for for the way the Argentine league runs, it's not going to work out. You are going to need to pay something if you want them, but there are, there are a lot of question marks with them. It's you're you're taking a risk by going after them as a player on the field production. Yes, yes, yes. Go after him. He's a game changer. We've had tons of that talk. Well, the Galaxy need a cam. He's not a cam, but I'll I'll die on the hill that he can it's create a cam him. or a game changer or a creator. Right. Right. And he's a creator. You know, yeah. he create he creates with assists. He creates goals. He, you know, creates havoc on defenses. So I'm okay with not having a cam if you have someone like that who could be a creator and create chances and create goals. 0.6 and 0.65, actually 0.59 and 0.65 in terms of goals plus assists per 90 when he was with the LA Galaxy. Uh, 0.55 with Boca, 0.67 with Boca, 0.63 with Boca. Uh, he's at 0.4 right now this season. Um, but again, there's a lot of talk. And I did talk to our good friend John Rojas, by the way. Everybody's like, oh, John Rojas. Um, I, talk, I, I was like, who can I talk to about Argentina? And I'm like, John is the guy. And so I called him. Um, we had a nice little chat uh, as I was driving down the freeway. Uh, John is doing well. 
I do plan on having him on the podcast, especially if this continues to go in the direction that we think it is. Um, so John and I had a little discussion about that. Apparently, Pavone is once again saying, I don't want to be here. I want to go. I want out of here. And Boko goes, we want you gone. We don't want you here. And then we have to go. And Debbie asks the correct question. What happened to his court case? I said in the tweet that I imagined, well, actually, I didn't say I imagined. I said, you know, the, the LA Galaxy wouldn't touch him as long as there were still these charges hanging out. And if you're, you've been living under a rock for two years, it's two years now, isn't it? It feels like two years. Yeah. If you've been living under a rock for two years, uh, there uh, he was accused of sexual assault um, by a young lady uh, that was forwarded on to the prosecutor who then does the investigation. It's still in the investigatory phase. Uh, he has said that he didn't do it and it wasn't him. Uh, his lawyers have said that this is an extortion case, plain and simple. I've heard at least uh, over the year that they that the Galaxy believe that's probably the case as well, that this has happened before in these situations to players at Boca and the whole deal. I'm not saying that that's... I, I don't want to pick a side here. I just want you to understand the landscape. That's... that's Well, if they're offering to buy in, then they're, they're basically playing that. They're on that side of it where they, they seem to be in line with you know believing the christian pavone side and his lawyer's side if they're willing to take that risk you know and we we've had people that you know i know you've spoken to and we've spoken to have said based on the character that they've seen that's the direction they're going but it's it's still a risk it's still a risk even so, if it's like you yeah. said if, it, yeah, if go it's for 90 it. yeah if it's 90 yeah. <laughs> if you're 99 percent sure and i feel at the Galaxy galaxy field they're 99 percent sure uh that christian pavone and just based on what they know of him um, that this is that he's an innocent man and that he's going if you're one per, if you're a half a percent wrong and you realize I so let's just let's play this out just a little bit just for this let's pretend this all happens let's pretend Christian Pavone comes the Argentine legal system is supposedly slow um, even maybe slower than the US court system um, and so it takes a while for these things to progress. Uh, that means that he could play for the LA Galaxy and that court case just never pops back up. But the question is always going to be there and it's not going to be able to be answered. If he has a press conference, the first question that gets asked is about this case, about what, how they, how, why the LA Galaxy feel comfortable even associating this. And anytime they talk about the case, let's say it starts to pick up and now there's going to be maybe a trial or there's going to be more investigation. They're going to link Christian Pavone, sexual assault and the LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy player. Yes. LA Galaxy winger. That's going to be in line number one. Yeah. So you're now you're putting yourself on that line. You, yeah. you absolutely are. And so, you yeah. know, even if you're 99% sure if he goes to trial and you're linked, that's your club, be, your name being dragged through that the whole time. So you have to be a hundred percent sure that this is not going to be an issue. Um, if he gets convicted and you've bought the player knowing that this was hanging over his head and now he can't play for you and you lose the money and you do all these things, this is a risk. This is a risk that could cause people their jobs. Um, and it, it's something the LA Galaxy apparently are comfortable enough with that they're going to go and approach this and, again. And I would imagine, since paperwork hasn't been drafted, knowing this going into it, I would imagine that there's some type of clause built into it that if you know things go a different direction that the galaxy are able to cut ties i would hope but even even if let's say you're able to clean cut you don't owe him money uh and you don't you know you're able to release it for the team with no penalty because that was built into a contract you've now wasted time and effort and you now need to go look for another winger and look for another dp and so you're now starting over again so even if that's built into the contract it still sets you back if it does go in the opposite direction that's where we sit with Pavone. Uh, right now, the LA Galaxy are in pursuit of Christian Pavone, from what I understand. That doesn't mean that he's coming. It does mean that there's a possibility that he comes, um, and so keep that in mind. Um, that is that is where we're at now. Uh, by the way, uh, feel the berm correct. Yeah. Correct That's, question. Hundred yes. percent correct. I was why, just gonna bring it up. Yep. <laughs> why why risk it all? Feel the berm says. Is there no one comparable? And this was one of the things that we had in our group chat, Eric, which was. Yeah. Are they out of ideas? Do they not know that there are other soccer players that maybe don't have rape yeah. allegations oh. <laughs> like hanging over their head? I, I'm going to say, I don't know if this is going to need to be bleeped, but I'm going to quote Heath Ledger from 10 Things I Hate About You. One of the best lines. It's with, with this girl. Does she have beer flavored nipples? Yes. Like, yeah, there are a lot yeah. of, there, there, are other, there are other players out there. There are other wingers that you can go after, other cams. So, yeah, so I, I, I agree. So while I would love to have Pavone, he, he produced while he was here. You know, th there are other comps. There are other things I see. Perisic is a name that Patrick keeps throwing in there. I'd love to have someone like that, you know, come to the team. So you're right. There are other players out there that you can go after and pay a handsome sum for it and, and have them be worth it. So that that's where I feel the berm is, is absolutely asking all the right questions. Now, the other thing that you sort of get, though, is he's also a proven commodity in Major League Soccer, right? 
and you would imagine yeah you would imagine and, that's worth a lot of money right and 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 because you know going back to chicharito when his he first came and he struggled and then i uh, even saw in the chat someone had mentioned well he's not scoring for boca he's not playing as well as he did there but you saw what he can do in this league. And so I think he gives you that confidence. Okay, maybe he's not necessarily at that level at Boca, but you saw what he could do with the Galaxy when he has, you know, you know, he's able to go at the 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 talent around this particular league, what he can do around here. So that's where you feel comfortable with it, even if he's not doing the same exact things one for one uh, in Argentina right now. I think I think it's a huge gamble, um, a it huge is. gamble. And, a, you know, I... I don't know. That's that's where we'll leave it for now is that's that's sort of where we sit with that and the LA Galaxy are going after them. All right. Are we are we good for can we move on to the next one now? We're ready. Cause, Hit cause, the alert. Because we have another one. Let's see if we. Ah, yes. There we go. All right. Uh, alert here. We now have the Dan Steris alert. Uh, Corner of the Galaxy can confirm Dan Steris. Uh, one of the longest tenured players outside of Sebastian Legette with the LA Galaxy is on the trading block. Uh, and we we surmise that in the off season, right? Um, and it's it's one of those things where you're sort of like, okay, it seems like he's out of favor with Vanny, and Vanny, you know, it's basically the same thing with the Jet. If Vanny can't trust Dan Stairs, then Dan Stairs isn't going to play. And if Dan Stairs isn't going to play, then there's probably value in him moving somewhere else. Uh, was able to confirm with a couple sources. One is that Dan Stairs is absolutely on the trading block. Uh, the other is it seems as if, and and I was told by somebody that his playing time with LA is is at an end. Um, this could be a deal that gets announced on Sunday. I'm sort of, I don't know that it is, but I think something possibly could happen um, coming up in this trade window. And this could be that move that, that sort of moves. I don't know teams yet. I don't know a lot of those things. Yeah. Um, this, I, yeah, yeah, I, go ahead. I will say Madam Serrano has it in the chat. And again, the chat keeps beating me to, to my points here. But Charlotte, again, is another team that I think you're, if you're building, you go domestic, you go American defender, a known commodity in the league, you know, someone who's going to be able to start games and help you out. Charlotte's, that, a, that's, Charlotte's a fun city, too. I mean, that, that's, that's not a horrible place to go to. Yeah, like when Dave that, went to Nashville, Dave Romney went yeah, to Nashville, that was exactly, a good city. This Charlotte exactly. is a good city. So this that seems like one that makes a lot of sense. So it just uh, the it's a little bit of a depressing thing with Legit, you know, on his way out, stairs on his way out. It's kind of the end of an era because they were, you know, good stewards of the club. Like they 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 gave this team what they had and they contributed. And so you, you I, I agree. We had this we've had this conversation lots of times. Uh, you know, Dan Stairs is it's it's if it's time for him to move on, he deserves better. He doesn't need to be jerked around and said, am I going to start? Am I going to sub? Am I going to start? And keep doing that dance. Go somewhere where he knows he's going to get the playing time. And he doesn't have to worry about, do I need to prove myself to another new coach and another center back that's going to come in? You know, no. I think I think he's shown that, okay, it's time to move on and, and, and focus on something different. So, you know, credit to you downstairs. You know, way to serve the club. But, you know, I totally get why it's time to move on also. Yeah. Um, by the way, and the the man that I called the nuclear cockroach, um, probably that's that's lovingly. By the way, I would like to point out lovingly <laughs> the nuclear cockroach um, outlasted so many different defenders that came in to try to like unseat him. And whenever you look at this season, Nick DePew probably played a little bit better than Dan Steris, but to be honest, I don't know that it was like head and shoulders it's... above. <laughs> question question for Whiskers, you. Whiskers, yeah. Question for you. How old is Dan Steris? Twenty seven. 31. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, Where he wears it well. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. but I, but another reason and again, not here I am, not that I'm a, a spring chicken here, but that's again, if you if it's time to move on, you know, that's probably the age, you know, you look at legit, you look at stairs, okay, you need to start rebuilding. They've been with the club for a, a long time, so yeah, that age it kind of makes sense to move on to to something different. Dan Steris uh, is uh, had a career low in minutes in 2021, so 18 games played, 13 games started, 1134 total minutes. Uh, his previous low was 1321 with 20 games and 14 games started in 2018. Uh, again, with the club since 2016, really, whenever you see him playing, 31 games played, 29 games started, uh, went right through 2017, 2018, 2019, all the way into this, and so it looks like he will not be with the LA Galaxy in 20. 22 uh that is that is probably a place where the la galaxy are looking to replace um yeah. and and there's i'm looking at sort of where things fit if you if you take christian pavone and you move him away and say okay you're going to need somebody i'm looking at two positions in the midfield that probably need to be filled right and one of those here's the deal is i feel like with the rumors that we've heard so far greg vanny's going to play a two forward system 
Right. Correct. And so it, so he, and he even said it towards the end of the year. I think I learned that I need to have another forward up there with Chicharito. Right. So yeah, you got he, Jovalich and you got Cabral that can, they can fill those roles. Grant Sear possibly, maybe you can even go for three up top, right? You could go a four, three, three, but bottom line is somebody is going to be up top with Chicharito. So let's pretend it's a four, four, two. So that way we can all picture that formation in our head. When I say the spots that I see open in this formation, one would be a left winger or a right winger, depending on where you want to put Grant Sear, right? I like Grant Sear on the left, but he's, he's an interchangeable piece. Okay. Okay. So, good. So, so I, so I think you need the other wing covered because now that's where you would have put Legette, uh if you're putting Cabral at forward. So either Cabral's going there or if you're using him as a forward or, you know, whatever different, I think you need, you need another winger to backfill. Okay. And then so, our so, beloved, go for it. Yeah. There's this like cam, right? This, there the, it is. Or, or a central <laughs> midfielder, just a central, yeah. mid, maybe not a cam, maybe not a central attacking midfielder. Uh, Chicharito certainly seemed to have a lot of success dropping back into the midfield and creating from there and turning. So do you need somebody who's just able to support or start runs from deeper in there? Not necessarily a, a, a central attack, but I mean, everybody's still sort of saying you need a 10. If Pavone comes back, he's going to get the number 10 shirt. Um, and, but you still need a 10, a creator in that center midfield, but you could play Victor Vasquez there. Maybe Sasha Kleshin comes back as well. I think it's going to be one or the other between Vasquez and Kleshin, but I could see it being both with Kleshin spinning, splitting time as a coach as well. So just keep that in mind there. And then there's the center back. I have a center back question. All right. I don't know who the second starting center back is. I don't know if it's Nick Depew. I don't know if it's Sega Koulibaly. Um, I don't know if it's going to be Jalen Jalen Neal. Right. So, do you need a starting center back? Do you go out and get one? If you're going to get it rid of Dan Stares, you at least need somebody either as a backup or as a potential starter. And you're making money on some of these deals. You're trading. You get salary relief plus whatever else you were getting. There's a chance that you could level up on that center back and put, I try to get another starting center back yeah. that fits with Derek Williamson. That's the ever revolving door of when are we finally going to get our starting center back for, <laughs> for the, we'll be there for, for three to four seasons. I think, I think Williams might be that guy, but Williams has also shown some flaws, but you're right. I think this does show that, yeah, we, that position does need some, some backfilling as well. So, so I have like three starting positions that are question marks for me. The, the, a winger of some sort, a central midfielder of some sort, and possibly a center back of center some back. sort. Right. And, but there's also a whole bunch of depth in there as well. The LA galaxy currently have 23 players on the roster. If you figure that Legette is going and that Steris is going that takes it down to 21. There's some guys who are not really on the roster, but that they're listed yeah. on the roster. So People Gonzalez is one of those guys. So he's gone. So you're at 20. Let's say and this between 20 and 19. Yeah. And your guys that you can load down to G2 who are right. not necessarily going to be on your, your I, game day. So that's where you get your above 30. I, again, so, so you're going to be in this situation where the Galaxy have around 20 players, let's say. So you can add 10 more players to the roster and three of those are starting spots. We know one is a designated player, right? One is possibly a TAM player. And then you have one that maybe you're in the five to $750,000 range in terms yeah. of what you could pay them that's, as a center back. Really, that's the center back position yeah. if you're if you're talking and, about that. So the, the only part, like when we do our... our MLSPA salary show and you look at that salary range and you're like, man, the players that you can get for the value who are able to produce, produce like that. Like I think of someone like Blanco in Portland, it's like, you know, they can, can kind of fits in that range. And it's, so that, that's the question is, yeah, that they have that money to do it, but can they get the right guy? And the galaxy just haven't been able to get the right guy for whatever reason over the past season. So it's just, it's just being able to, to figure out who that guy is going to be because right now, they just haven't had luck of finding that. Again, your 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 DP, you're going to be able to spend whatever. So that's not going to be. You're not going to find a diamond in the rough there. That's going to be an established guy. But you know, your your mid level players. That's where the work needs to be done, and that's really where you win MLS cups and playoff games and develop dynasties is with those kind of fringe players who not your household names, but they come into MLS and just dominate and ball out. Those are the type of guys that the Galaxy haven't been able to score. By the way, People Gonzalez is not going to come back and play for the LA Galaxy. He'll be loaned <laughs> out again. Everybody's in the chat room is like, oh, man, it's going to be. And they're joking. But at the same time, the, you know, we're not, we're not <laughs> expecting people to be on this roster. He will be loaned out. His salary will not hit the the salary cap. This is one of the reasons the LA Galaxy had the highest roster, highest paid the roster in MLS is 
one, because they do tend to skew in that direction most of the time with their designated players. But the other reason is they also had 34 players on the ro- on the quote unquote roster that they're paying, even though some of those don't hit against the cap. Right. And so you had four players basically that were not cap eligible and did not make money. You know, they get paid, but it doesn't count. So really, you have to look at like 30 players who actually paid and that probably knocks the L.A. Galaxy down a couple spots. They're still ridiculously paid. So it's it's yeah. they're up there for, for the results. The Galaxy have gotten they have one of the highest ones. Here's the other thing. Greg Vanny, we know, has a history of spending big and going after big names with Toronto. And so I would expect that the LA Galaxy consistently have a high priced roster. Um, That's fine whenever you get the results. Whenever you don't get the results, then it looks bad. But when Toronto had the highest salary by like six or seven million dollars or whatever it was, uh, and they won an MLS Cup, everybody was like, oh, okay, who cares? Yeah, well, they should. It's all worth it. That's right. (laughs) That's That's why you do it. And then even when you have that same salary and you're in last place the following year, it's like, well, we got we got our cup, so that's just kind of the hangover from uh, from winning it. So you're right; it's all worth it when you win the big one. Uh, did this is did the whole idea with that roster talk, by the way, is just to sort of assuage the ideas that the Galaxy are going full rebuild mode. There's there this is they have a core. They have talked about having a core. We know they have a core of players that they're building around. Most of the people who are start who started last year are going to start this next year. Uh, you're going to get to add a DP. You might add a central midfielder. And I would yeah. say that just on the face of it, I wouldn't even expect a starting center back. Maybe. I mean, there's, there's certainly questions about that. There's going to be a lot yeah. of depth built in. Those 10 players are more depth oriented than they are starter oriented. Except I, I will go, I'll, I'll, I'll zag on you. I'll push back the other direction. I know it's been a while since I've been on, but I've had this conversation with you. I think the galaxy season is more dependent on who they signed this year than their core of players. This past season, we saw what the core can do, and the core did not make the playoffs. There was not game changers in that roster. The players that they bring in and those top three spots, that DP, that high level, you know, value that they're going to get from a legit level player, and then uh, you know another third level player that's going to fit in that TAM range. Those are the players that need to be able to make the difference because the core right now, while it is a decent core, there's not that extra gear, that extra piece, and so I think the Galaxy season. Well, they don't. It's not a lot of players, but it, the season does hinge on whoever comes in. Because as constructed, the, we're going to repeat ourselves for what we saw last season. No, you know, maybe I disagree. So you I disagree. disagree. Yeah. As constructed, no, as right constructed, now, no right, additions. Well, well, the problem is that you're losing guys, so that's hard. Oh, to, okay. That's hard not to do. Fair. But as con- <laughs> but as constructed, they get uh, better because they started to play better towards the end of the season. I know the results didn't show it. Um, did they? Yeah, they did. They did. All right. Especially okay. it, we, we have and well, this. This has been my argument. And you sort results of results weren't there, but the play was better. The okay. play was better. You could see it. Okay. But also Chicharito, I think, is a game changer. And I think it, you can't. But he needs somebody else. You can't rely yes. on him like Zlatan. Right? You can't just feed him. You, he needs people around him feeding the ball. And yes. that was proven that if, if you don't feed him, he, he, he was when he's overworking and he's playing cam because he has to run all the way back because there's a hole in the midfield. That's a problem. But when you're able to have a, a competent midfield and just let him do his job, then yes, he is a game changer in that regard. Debbie asks how many international spots will be open. Uh, currently none. Uh, as it stands, uh, the guys who are departing, Jonathan Dos Santos departed, but technically the LA Galaxy had, I think, 10 total international slots. As the Galaxy roster is constructed right now without <laughs> people being loaned down, they're at eight. Um, that will happen. They will be able to open up spots. Pipo gets loaned. Carlos Harvey can move as well. Biggest problem with Carlos Harvey is that dude needs a green card worse than anybody else because if he gets been that... Here for, right? And he's been here for, what, a, five, a while. Four years, well, he, five years? Because no, yeah. he was on loan, though, remember? And he was on loan to Galaxy 2, and then he, yeah. they, 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 they uh, brought him back on a, on a, a permanent deal up to the senior team. But he needs a green card. That's going to hinder his progression through major league soccer because he costs an international slot. And if they can loan him down, they're going to loan him down, even though he may be a better option off the bench than some other guys who are domestic players. So that would be one of the things they will have some, um, they will have some, they will have some, some spots open, that type of thing. But, you know, just going back, I think this LA galaxy team is progressing. I think that at the beginning of the year, we saw that they were outperforming their ex, their expected goals and outperforming the stats. And we were all like, Okay, but they're winning, and that's like they willed the the well, wins, right? And then and you go towards the, the end of the year, and it flipped. The, the the scale was they didn't play as well, and they got the points, and then they did play well, they didn't get the points, and so it ended up balancing itself out. But I'll still stand where they they deserved the result that they they got the result they deserved based on their performance this season. But the chances were there, and they didn't they didn't add the points when they could have, and so for that that they do need to improve on that, and we need. 
we need players to help us improve on that, I believe. Uh, Matt asks a good question, by the way, says, will Julian Araujo spend all of next season with the Galaxy or does he get sold in the summer? Great question. Uh, we went over this on Monday. I'm making an argument currently that uh, Julian Araujo is more difficult to sell right now than Efrain Alvarez because the LA Galaxy have zero replacement in Major League Soccer or in their academy system or somewhere else in the world, even an in international, really, that can come in and do what Julian Araujo is doing for them right now. I'm not saying he's the best in the world at that position, but in terms of what you can get in Major League Soccer, Eric, to me, Julian Araujo is so hard to sell if you're the LA Galaxy right now. But, but here's the thing. This is a World Cup year, and what we saw this week is an indicator of something where if you catch fire, if Julian Araujo, you know, like Hercules' tweet that you yep. just showed there, Hercules Gomez, uh, said the best player on the field for the Mexican national team, even though it was a friendly, wasn't the Mexico A team, but it was a kid from, you know, Lompoc, California, U.S. soccer product, Galaxy product. In a World Cup year, tons of scouts, bunch of eyeballs. If he makes that Mexico team and he's able to get – not even starting minutes, but he, he's able to make a splash in a few games. There, there's going to be a team that's going to come after him, and they're going to pay a hefty fee for him. So it, I think it, that is a factor that needs to be considered, that if he does find a, a spot on this Mexican national team, he's going to go away sooner. The, and, sooner, the more he time looked, he gets with the national team, the faster he the, – the less yeah. his time on the Galaxy. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect X. Those things are going to cost – you know, the more, the, the more time he gets with that team, he's just, we could start, you know, packing his bags for the LA Galaxy. It, it hurts, but that's just, he's, he's, you can't, you're he's not going to be able that. to keep him. Yeah. He, he's earning that himself. But eventually it becomes too much money for the Galaxy to turn down, right? It's one of those, it's like, well, it's even if we point. get worse, which we're going to do, if you're going to get $12 million or $15 million for somebody like Julian Araujo, then you make that deal and you, and you take it. Um, right now, I think that the, the currently in, in sort of the, the po I'm going to say post COVID knowing very well that there's shutdowns going on in Europe and all sorts of things are going on. But in this sort of, um, you know, you're watching people play and see the values that they were seeking from the United States for players that they could take a shot on and maybe underbid them on their value. Right. And be like, well, for $6 million, that's not a lot of money for our club. And we need to find those value players. And he might be good enough to actually like make us $20 million down the road. It may takes a chance to to do that. That's somebody like Efrain Alvarez is somebody who could be bought right now because somebody's like, man, there's a chance that he could be good. So yeah. I'm going to give you five million dollars, and you're going to sell him, and you're going to take it because. And if you're the Galaxy, you're like, here's the five million dollars because yeah. you don't know what you're going to get. The problem with Julian is he keeps playing so well. You you're starting to know what you're going to get, and that's a really good player. And because of that, the Galaxy are like, ah, oh, we can't not for eight. Yeah. I mean, you're like, slap the hand if somebody comes to you at $8 million. No. Did you see no, him play? That's a and, consideration, yeah. <laughs> and he played he played full 90 minutes in the 2-2 draw with Chile. Um, he was one of the better, better players. Hercules Gomez said it. Uh, I think he helped create Mexico's second goal as well, not an assist, but helped create it. Uh, played well. You know, it, it's not too big of a stage for him. That's the bottom line. And so, yes, it's friendly. Yes, all those things. But Julian Araujo is going to spend time with the Mexican national team as all this stuff marches towards a, 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 a World Cup. Um and for major league soccer players, they get to play the whole season and then go into yeah. a world cup. So it's, it's going to be, it's better for them. I mean, I, if you're going to, if you want to put like money, on stuff, yeah, if, if you want to put MLS players in world cup this year, this is, this is the, this is the time, right? The U S needs to take advantage of, but all the CONCACAF teams that make it will probably take advantage of the fact that MLS players mm -hmm. are going to have the hot hand going into, um, you know, this, uh, this world cup. So they'll be in full form at the end of their season. Everybody else will just sort of be stretching those legs a little bit. So um, I imagine it's going to be interesting on the World Cup, just the quality of play that we're going to get this year versus uh, this next year versus all the other ones. And a, a lot of injuries that happen are kind of, you know, this rest and then they come back and maybe overexert. And so you do get a lot of injuries kind of at the start of the year, the season also. So it's cur I'm curious to see how that impacts, uh, you know, you know, players who are maybe treating their bodies differently and maybe not, giving that hundred percent with their club in the fall uh, because they're trying to save themselves for a world cup. That is going to, it is going to be fascinating, you know, with, with all the drama around the world cup itself uh, you know, it, it's, it's a fun thought experiment. And if, if nothing else, it'll be a spectacle to watch. Yeah. The, uh, the other part about this is uh, Victor Felipe Mendez, the 22 year old uh, defensive midfielder who played for Chile played in this game as well. Um, I, I heard a lot of people at the beginning, I think he came on in the second half. A lot of people were like, oh, the galaxy want to get, want to get this guy. Like, is that, is that something? Um, and then, uh, he had a much, he had a, he played, ended up playing pretty well. And so it was like, okay. Um, Victor Felipe Mendez, 22 year old defensive midfielder. We talked about 
some of the the Ilya Sanchez, which turns out to be a fake rumor, but at the same time makes a lot of sense um, as sort of that defensive midfielder area. So Ravellison possibly being pressed into an eight role instead of a six. Um, and then you could also have a 22 year old possible with Victor Felipe Mendez as well. I uh, haven't heard anything else on him. I haven't even heard confirmation the Galaxy are interested in him. I'm just going assumption on that stuff. I have to remember to be very clear. Anytime I mention something, people are like, oh, the Galaxy are interested. Josh talked about him on the podcast. I talk <laughs> about anybody on this podcast. Um, Pato. Pato was, the, don't forget how you got your nickname. There, there's, there's a reason now why these things get brought up. The, the one thing I will say, and, and I know you've, you've mentioned it, is, you know, is Ravellison going to, you know, move to that eighth slot? And that makes me nervous as well. You know, I, th- I think this is like the fifth time I've said I'm nervous. But JDS and Ravellison, when they were on the field together, it didn't work. And so is that because JDS was supposed to play the eight and wasn't doing his role? Or was it because you had two uh, defensive midfielders? So if you bring in another defensive midfielder, or is it going to be the same thing? Right. Are they going to cancel each other out? Right. Or you know, is, is Rolfson going to get different instructions and maybe you know we'll see something a little bit different? So I, I know what we're saying with the defensive midfielder and how that would change the roles, but then we saw what happened when we had a natural defensive midfielder with Jonathan Dos Santos that didn't work with uh, Ravellison. So that does make me a little bit nervous if, if a defensive midfielder is someone that we're looking at. Uh, it's not a depth piece, but something that we're looking at as a starter. Can I ask you a question of sort of going back to Pavone and, and all the interest in him? Does it disappoint you that the LA Galaxy are sort of like not launching this worldwide search for the next designated player where, I mean, and, Let's be very clear. The LA Galaxy and AEG have enough money that they could offer any amount of money for any player in the world. Totally. I know some of that would seem unrealistic, but if they wanted to go to PSG and say, hey, we want Leo Messi on this team and we're willing to give you this much money. And AEG is listed, I think, as the sixth or seventh richest club, maybe eighth now um, with Newcastle coming on. Uh, But the sixth or seventh, eighth, top 10 richest club in the world, not in Major League Soccer, in the world. And We've seen what Atlanta United can do, and they've been rumored to possibly pay even $16 million for a transfer coming up that they knocked that down, but that's yeah. that's not outside the realm of possibility. Crazy? So so are the LA Galaxy, I mean, so you're, you're it's, going to the LA Galaxy, it's like, oh, well, it's Christian Pavone, you've, you've been there before. It's, it's, it's Sugar Ray going to all the county fairs and playing uh, I Just Want to Fly over and over again. It's like, hey, they like it, let's play the hits. And so, hey, Pavone was good two seasons ago. Let's go back to Pavone. Hey, Zlatan's out of the contract. Let's go get Zlatan. He did well when he was here. So you're right. That part of it does, I agree. It is disappointing, you know, especially with the allegations that are surrounding him. But why not look elsewhere? So I understand there's a certain, you know, we we're talking about it with, you know, the, the League Two players from France. There's a certain familiarity when you build relationships with clubs that you're going to maybe continue those relationships over the years. I understand that component of it. But at the same time, uh, yeah, if, is that the best idea we got? Is that the brain trust? The best idea we had is to go back for a player that was, you know, played good well for us two seasons ago who had sexual allegations. That's the best we can do. There, there's no other options. And maybe there are. Maybe we were just, you know, scoffing and wagging our fingers because, uh, you know, of, of previous experience. But we're also justified in that because we've seen this administration at work. So, you know, we're right to ask questions because we've seen it blow up. Uh, for the people who are look to be making the decisions right now, we've seen it go very wrong. So, you know, they're not going to get that, uh, you know, that benefit of a doubt because they've shown us how they can run this club into the ground uh, before. So it, I agree with you. It is disappointing. That's a fair question to say, you know, <laughs> did it work? Uh, no, you know, who, who else can we go for? So you're right. And the, the Beckham story, that's, that tells you everything you need to know. You know, before David Beckham, that would, would have been a wild thought. So you're right. Messi, CR7. I, w- I would not be surprised if any of those players were to come to the LA Galaxy uh, in the next two seasons because they have the cash. And, you know, with with the game growing like it is in the United States, it would not be surprising. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, John, John says, how do you know they aren't going after all these guys? And it's true enough, true enough. But certainly the rumor right now is that they're full steam ahead on Pavone. So, you know, I can only... I can only theorize on what I have heard and what we what we are are trying to connect dots to. You, you could be right. Maybe maybe they surprised the Christian Pavone thing is a misdirection. They went down to Argentina just that way. You know, Greg Vanny could slide out over to Europe and is you know dining with Cristiano Ronaldo and family right now and asking him where he wants to live in L.A. and you know Cristiano puts his arm around Greg and gives him a little knucklehead. You know, not not that the Eric the Portuguese hammer is bias, but. <laughs> Uh, Vera mentioned that, you know, they're waiting for a 40 year old Ronaldo. And if there is a player who treats his body 
like a machine who is going to play until they're 40, 40 plus and still be able to produce. Mark my a 40 year old Ronaldo at the LA Galaxy can still Book bang it. in goals. Book it. I, I'm telling you, I'm Book telling it. you, I believe. And of course, take that from your source, the Portuguese hammer himself. <laughs> I am a little bit biased. But if there's a player that's going to do it, I think Ronaldo is the guy who can come to the league at 40 and still produce. Maybe Joel Pedro's out of contract again. Maybe he can come <laughs> hey, back. He's he's banging in penalties and goals, captaining his team in Tondela. So there's a, you know, wasn't the player. It was yeah. the situation. It was the situation. It was, a, you know, he, he, he's I can't disagree. He's I can't disagree. I can't disagree with that. It definitely yeah. was a situation, and, and I can understand that. All right. Um, is there anything else that you want to get to um, before we go? I, th- I think we've covered it all. It was, I, I do. We, I do. We got, I do we got her. We got the holiday sweater. Right. We covered all the rumors. Okay. Farewell, legit. Farewell, downstairs. And yeah. we, we move on. Yeah, we can do it. Although, although, I have one more thing. Go for it. Another Another alert. No, I'm kidding. I just wanted to use it one more time. I, I, it took me 30, 30 seconds to put that together, and I just wanted to b- b- make it happen one more time. <laughs> one more time. Yeah, just why not? It's a it's a good time. Um, yeah, that's it. A, a lot of stuff starting to happen. And again, we talked about the half-day trade window coming up. There's, you know, MLS Super Draft eventually is in, I think, in January. Um, we're expecting that Galaxy Report to camp January 12th, January 15th, somewhere in the middle of January. Um, games start end of February. I mean, it's gonna, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I felt like this year took forever and it's going to, it's going to come and turn around again where there, we're going to start seeing trades fly and, and everything happen. So yeah, it's crazy how quickly it's going to turn around. So 80 exciting days. times, 80, 80 days. days until the LA galaxy oh. hosts New York city FC. Okay. MLS cup champion. Uh, maybe New York city FC. Maybe. Who, who, who do you got? Portland. I got yeah. Portland. I, I think Portland at home. I just I think all the good mojo is going in their direction. I could see them. I see them walking away in regular time. I refuse to acknowledge the Eastern Conference as being good this year. So I'm going to say it's Portland. I'm going to I'm going to go with that. All right. All right. So they will open against Eastern Conference champions, New York City, (laughs) New York City, FC. Because they definitely celebrated being Eastern Conference champions. (laughs) Don't get, I already, I, everybody was <laughs> I calling me like an old man, get off my lawn on Monday. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't need any more of that uh, for sure. All right. Tell people where they can find you, Eric. We'll get on out of here. All right. As always, you can find me on Twitter at hammer EV. You can also find me on Instagram at galaxy profile. That's galaxy P R O F O U L. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Gessman, J G U E S M E N. And of course at galaxy podcast, head on over corner of the galaxy.com. That's where you can find all of our podcasts, all of our news, all that fun stuff. Uh, Twitter is a good place. Our Discord is a good place. Like, review, all those places. Subscribe. Please give us a subscribe or a like on the video if you're watching it on YouTube. Live shows on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, we'll have live shows going all the way, normally scheduled up until Monday the 20th. That will be our last one of 2021. And then we will come back 2022. All right. I think show number 900 is on Monday, FYI. Just letting everybody know. Not that I'm planning anything special, but 900 is around there. All right. All right. Good. Everybody, thanks for joining us. We certainly appreciated it. Uh, he's the Portuguese hammer, Eric Vera. I'm Josh Patrick Esman. You've been listening. You've been watching you Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. See ya. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.